dear colleagues and friends, my name is Maxim Belegrad and I'm happy to present you episode number 5 from our BG Dental Cases video tutorials that are dedicated to clinical cases review. This time I would like to present interesting case that is related to benefits and advantages to prep teeth with Rabinem. Okay, so and also I will share with you uh, the, the case that is about replacement of old composite veneers and or old composite crowns into the new ones made of porcelain ceramic. Okay, I would like to mention at the very beginning before I will start uh, um, going into step-by-step -step explanation before I will present the whole case I would like to mention that I'm not a dentist who preps every single case with Rabinem. I'm really big fan of Rabinem. I'm a one who will place Rabinem everywhere I can, but Rabinem has to be placed in a practical way. For example, I can prep teeth with Rabinem if teeth have carious lesions, carious defects, necessity to replace restorations, necessity to do immediate dentin sealing, or to necessity to do cavity design optimization, or there is an endodontic issue and I have to do endodontic treatment. In these cases, uh, Rabidem is, for me, is must. It is my protocol, okay? And if I have these cases, with the carries defects, with necessity to do fillings, with necessity to do some root canal treatment, I will get benefits to prep or continuing prepping my te teeth of my patients with Rabidem. In the rest of the cases, if teeth are are with no carious defects or uh, we got these te this teeth prepared with, uh, with fillings, with new fillings let's say, uh, I can just use Optrigate to prep them. Sometimes I can use Rabinem in specific cases when I have to secure or to, to block soft tissues. For example, lower teeth and cheek and patient's tongue that is always on our way. When we prep, the tongue is always fighting with us and we fight with this tongue. And if I cannot stabilize this tongue by the, the classic retractions with the suction systems, with the, with the, um, I don't know, with the, with the retractors, in this case, I can use rubber dam. I can place split dam technique or I can use a normal regular rubber dam and to prep this teeth just to to get comfortable conditions. For the rest of, of cases, I can do just preparations with a split dam, okay? So this is the case when patient came to our office with uh, old composite restorations and she was not happy with, uh, with appearance. I can say that there are some fancy, fancy design. You can see these black spots, like maybe artistic, um, artistic elements of, uh, of composite restorations. Uh, anyways, she was not happy with this. She wanted to change color and she wanted to change the shape of these teeth and uh, we started to plan this case with dental technician because dental technician will be involved into the process because dental technician will be responsible for color change because dental technician makes restoration. So before you start preparing any single tooth you have to ask your dental technician how much space he needs in that case to change the color okay because there are many options uh, and there are many materials that our dental technician uh, technicians uh, use and uh, they will guide us for example they say yeah, we can do emax full anatomy crowns or we can do emax with cutback and layering or we can do zirconia we can do uh, porcelain fused zirconia or monolithic zirconia or for example we can do veneers made of lacid ceramic with a porcelain with a feldspatic ceramic or whatever and dental technician knows how much space he needs what is the thickness of ceramic restoration in that case to change color from for example a3 to a1 let's say okay so dental technician will guide you you have to ask this is super important so in this case my dental technician said that he needs certain thickness for ceramic to change color i said perfect okay then i can take my depth cutter and i can make this depth cuts in, uh, in patient's teeth or in, uh, in uh, restorative material or in mock-up to get space for my dental technician 
um, to perform good grounds and aesthetic results. In this case, we didn't make mock-up, by the way. I'm also a big fan to do mock-ups in cases when we do uh, veneers or crowns or whatever, but in this case, uh, we decided that we will not do mocha because of one reason. The volume of, uh, of, of her teeth was pretty big, let's say. The, they were pretty bulky and we have had no space to do the mocha to get nice shape, texture or whatever. So we said that, okay, we will get this position of her teeth as a reference and uh, afterwards we will do a good shape of, uh, of final ceramic restoration. So I just was using the, my depth cuts through her existing composite restorations. Then I took out all this composite from frontal surface and I also took out fillings because she got before carries defects and I got these fillings out. And uh, I would like to point some very important moments. First of all, if your patient has old feelings, no pain, no complaints, everything is okay, just aesthetically your patient is not satisfied, I personally I prefer to replace old feelings as well because I'm not sure what is underneath. I don't know if there is a caries defect or maybe the feeling is already debonded. I don't want my patient come back in a while with... Uh, complain with endodontic issue, with the secondary caries, with, uh, with uh, postoperative sensitivity or whatever, whatever. So in this case, I would like to remove everything to check if there is no caries, there is no crack lines, by the way, the bonding is okay, and then I do fresh fillings. I can ask my, my for example, conservative dentist uh, to do this instead of me. So I can just refer my, my, my patient to a conservative dentist because I trust him. I know that he uses Rubidem, he uses proper bonding protocol or whatever. So I got this patient with the normal fillings and then I can prep. In that case, I was also uh, a restorative dentist and conservative dentist in, uh, one, in one body. So I did everything by myself. I did first step of preparation. I decided, I de de defined the geometry of preparation, so this is step one, then I can place Rubinem. Before placing the Rubinem, I would like, you to, sh I would like to show you some interesting, uh, interesting things. Here you have some, uh, you see that overhang, some over contoured composite that was in, uh, in patient sulcus. Uh, literally, I can remove it before placing Rubinem. I can take some scalpel blade or I can take curette or hand scaler or even with the burr, I can just uh, take this composite out. But what will happen, definitely I will damage the uh, soft tissues and then there will be bleeding and there will be uh, pretty problematic for me to take a final impression. So I don't want to uh, stress my life with, uh, with the damaging of soft tissue. So the, the, the tip here is for good impressions, for uh, fit of your provisional restorations or whatever, just to respect soft tissues of patients. Try to keep them not bleeding, not bleeded. And everything will be super perfect. In this case, they are not bleeded, you see. So what will be the next step? I put Rabinem, okay? In this case, I didn't put clamp. I just filled these uh, defects with fresh composite following all the process of um, bonding protocol step by step and then I placed clamp and here you can see the clamp gave me benefit because uh, having retracted rubidem and soft tissues let me just take this out these drawings out because I um, I did some uh, pre uh, let's say pre-design of this presentation. Let me go back to this slide again. Yeah, so here we have uh, some overhang of, uh, of composite material and uh, the benefit of to use the Rubidem in that case was that Rubidem retracted everything, okay? And what you can see here, you can see now that my initial finish line was made in composite. Okay, also you can see some uh, secondary caries here, discoloration, and so on. Let me just go back to previous slide, the very first one. 
because I would like to point very important things for you here. In that case, we decided that uh, our final preparation, the finish lines, the cervical finish lines, should be intracruvicular, basically within sulcus, because this patient had high smile line and uh, we needed to change the color. So I would like to mask transition between crown or veneer and tooth structure. So I would like to move my finish lines in, uh, in uh, sulcus. In this case, I cannot do initial finish line in, in tooth surface. That would be easier for me when I would place my rubber dam and then I will be able to see my initial finish line and then I will, be this, I, I will know where is the finish line, where was the, actually, where was the gum level before. In that case, everything was in composite. So here you can see my, f my initial finish line is in composite. So basically, I can know now that here is the level of the gum. Okay? And in this case, as I told you, we, would be, we have to do intracruvicular preparation. So I would remove this composite and then I will do my finish line a little bit above this line. So literally, it would be in the sulcus. So this is the trick. Magnification is a really good thing in that particular case because magnification will help you to see details. You, have, you can be super conservative and super gentle with, uh, with the sound to structures and also with, uh, with, uh, with the soft tissues as well. You can see now with a picture taken from the microscope and you can see all these overhangs and uh, debonded composites. So actually I started prepar preparing teeth with uh, um, uh, with, with burrs and handpiece. The handpiece in that case is really good to have increasing handpiece and electric motor because it gives you stable um, RPMs. In this case, we're, we're using uh, red diamond burrs with uh, 50, 60,000 RPM. You can see also flat plastic instrument that I was using to retract my, my rubber dam. Ultrasonic, ult ultrasound, which is super easy uh, to be used in case uh, where composite is not not bonded well, so you will just touch uh, your uh, this old composite with ultrasound, and it will jump out from the from the surface. And then you see now I move my finish line slightly down in comparison with the level that it was before. So I'm making now finish lines, which will be intracruvicular, okay, with a low speed, with a high magnification, with a precise control. Keeping enamel, I would like to have my finish lines in enamel and I can see where is enamel, where is uh, cementum already here because of the rubber enamel uh, retraction. So let me show you here. Another tip that I would like you to pick up is if you have clamp, you may understand that clamp may retract soft tissues really aggressively. If you have clamp, and you decide to prep with rubber dam and clamp, your finish line should be one millimeter or one and a half millimeter shorter from the clamp level, okay? That will help you to be in sulcus, in the beginning of the sulcus, because ideally, when you do that type of preparations, we don't need to go really subgingival. We don't need to go even for the full depth of the sulcus. Ideally, is to have your finish line within sulcus, okay? Let's say if the sulcus, the free sulcus is one millimeter, 0 0.5, perfect, 0 0.3, even better, okay? So in this case, I don't want to go for full depth of the sulcus because what I will get out of uh, that uh, deep preparation, first of all, will be difficult to take impression. Then if you have difficulties to take impression, you may get bad, bad fit of the restorations. So basically you may compromise biological width with that type of preparation. You may compromise biological width with bad fit of your restoration. And also you may compromise your biological width with overhangs of, um, of resin cement that you are using to bond your ceramic restoration. So in that case you make problems for yourself actually. Okay, so then we removed rubber dam. We gave five, seven minutes uh, to rest because gingiva uh, was compressed by the rubber dam, so we need some time to, uh, for gingiva to go back. Then I put retraction cord and I made final preparations with retraction cords. In that case you can see that we can be super conservative by the way because modern ceramic systems and uh, uh, current bonding protocols 
let us be conservative and we can use pretty thin ceramic systems especially if you have enamel and you bond ceramic to enamel we have to understand that actually we are bonding similar biomechanical substrates to each other and if spacer is minimal which is which says that the surface fit of your restoration is perfect restoration can be thin as thin as your dental technician can perform but basically the thickness of restoration in that cases will be based on color change that's it and that helps us to save a lot of enamel and we are safe because there is no postoperative sensitivity there is no dentin exposed every dent every single portion of dentin that was exposed because of the caries was secured by uh, by composite the rest was in, in enamel the best bonding now that we can have is to have bonding to enamel so that is the, the that is the, there is no secret behind it's just uh, the the current situation we in adhesive dentistry and minimally invasive dentistry so these are the final uh, preparations the uh, ceramic rounds made of emacs with slight cutback and layering some try in isolation you can see also from palatal side the view of uh, of prep tooth with a really minimal uh, preparation this is dry fit control with no bonding, with no try-in paste, with no cement yet, you can see some uh, uh, some bon uh, some some fit here, and this this immediate after uh, cementation, immediate after cementation, the, the soft tissues are okay, everything is okay, so we are ready for uh, uh, we are ready for another uh, clinical clinical case. Actually we are done with this case that was episode number fine, 5 I would like to remind you and also I would like to ask you again to write down in, in comments what topics you are actually interested. I mean just write down endodontics for example if you want us to share some endodontic cases with some step-by-step uh, -step explanations or let's say composite just write down composite. Composite cases, layering, finishing and polishing, some uh, emergent profile, maybe contact points or whatever, maybe ceramic veneers or complex cases. Every single comment that you write, we process, we evaluate, we make statistics and uh, we, will, uh, we will film uh, the next episodes actually based on your, on your, on your comments. I mean, uh, on most frequently asked comments, we will uh, film our next issues of, uh, of uh, BG, Dental, uh, BG Dental cases. Okay, I was happy one more time to spend uh, to, to, to share with you uh, my cases. I hope that you will get some tips and tricks that will be useful in your daily basis. And uh, keep in touch, my friends. Don't forget to switch on notifications and to uh, subscribe our YouTube channel because a lot of new interesting cases and new projects are coming. So keep in touch and see you very soon. Bye-bye.